A student once said to his master, Master, you teach me fighting, but yet you talk about peace. How do you reconcile the two? The master then replied, Well, it's better to be a warrior in a garden than to be a gardener in a war. Some have come to this challenge at Florida Maquis. Sometimes you talk about capitalism, sometimes you talk about conservative values, and other times you talk about socialism, and you don't decry it the way that other conservatives do. Well, it's basically the same wisdom. You have to look at history with a critical eye and understand what really built this country, and it wasn't capitalism. Free markets, sure, but not capitalism. Real quick, though, we are going today to delve into this issue down at the border, and all of those who are talking about it missing the big story in this picture. What's the big story in this picture? I'm sure a lot of you have seen the video of this mob of immigrants coming to this place where they have a fence up and it's covered with razor wire and somehow they have gotten the fence down. But wait a minute. I thought a giant razor wire fence would have stopped this. See, that's what everybody misses. Apparently, they have metal snips in South America, Mexico. South of our border, metal snips exist. That's how they were able to get through here. But real quick, thank you. As always, I would like to take a moment out every day to say thank you to all of you who have joined us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel, where it's only one, one single U.S. dollar per month. That's it. Even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. There's a $5 level. If you'd like to join that group of people, there's a handful of videos over there. Probably our next video is going to be for the $5 folks, but the vast majority of content over there, hundreds of never-before-seen videos here on YouTube, is for those at the $1 level. I want to make this information, psychological operations information, available to the vast majority of folks who want to get away from the censorship. We can still do that in this country. We just have to put a few speed bumps in place. And that's kind of dovetailing a lot with what we're going to talk about today. It's a strange thing that all of a sudden, Florida has fallen off of the headlines. We've fallen off of the radar of the mainstream media. You see, nobody wants to talk about the success story that Florida is. We were supposed to have all died out by now of COVID and then... Of course, with the governor taking over and Disney fleeing, we would lose all of this income and then our, everything would collapse. And we're not having the same problem that Texas is having. We're not having the same problem that California is having or the rest of the country is having with immigration. We have a few little stories here and there, but usually those are stories of how quickly we locked things up. And they don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about how safe Florida has become, how we've become a model for what America should have been. And that's kind of part and parcel with the whole idea of the other 49, something we have referred to at this channel, castigating for decades as a culture. And that's the key in today's video. As a culture, it has been very popular to demonize and make fun of and castigate and look down on Floridians. Well, now the time has come to pay the piper on that. Suzanne Woods Fisher, a liberal progressive leftist writer, feminist writer, said, The values we leave our children are more important than the valuables we leave them. Now, whether you're left or right, I think a lot of people would agree with this, correct? That values are more important than things. But that leftist, feminist, progressive writer agrees wholeheartedly with Viktor Orban, the Prime Minister of Hungary, who is way over on the right, Donald Trump-level right. Values are more important than money. A more succinct way of saying that. Now, you ready for the, the hold on to your hats moment? Both of these individuals agree with something Fidel Castro said. Quality of life lies in knowledge in culture, values are what constitute true quality of life, the supreme quality of life, even above food, shelter, and clothing. That it doesn't matter how much you have, it doesn't matter whether you don't have anything, as long as you maintain and hold on to your beliefs and your values and your culture, you're going to do all right. 
Now imagine these three individuals all agreeing on the same point. Because I think a lot of people would say this, Florida Maquis, we're trying to preserve American culture. Isn't that what's going on here? Florida Maquis, we want to build a wall to keep these people out to maintain, to maintain American values and American culture. Now, here's the part where a lot of people stop thinking because they've gotten that. Remember a long time ago we talked about we're in a country now, in a state now, where people are doing nothing but going from emotion to emotion, feeling to feeling to feeling, believing that they're actually thinking. That's how deluded they are. You say something like that, you show the waving flags, and people are like, oh, I feel good, so therefore no more thought is required. Well, Florida Maki, we just want a safe place for our kids. Isn't, is not is something so wrong with that, that we want a safe place for our kids to grow up? And, hmm, that's interesting. He who would trade liberty for some temporary security deserves neither liberty nor security. Benjamin Franklin, a very easy thing to roll off the tongue of the childless Benjamin Franklin so many hundreds of years ago would have balked at the idea of handing the federal government the power that would be necessary to build a giant wall across our southern border in the name of security. He would say, you're going to, I mean, he would probably have already balked at the idea of us having a standing army to begin with. You're going to use federal troops and build this giant wall and give these people all of this power for some temporary level of security. Benjamin Franklin would have probably not been on the side you would have thought, but it gets worse. We talked about this before, and it's directly connected to exactly what's going on. Global, global fertility rate to plunge by end of century, study says. You ready for this? World's population to fall for first time since the Black Death in the 1300s. Back then, the world population went from 400 million to about 350 million because of the waves of the Black Death that hit Europe. Now, there was no census of uh, the New World at that time, no census of, um, I guess, what we would call South America, Africa, Indonesia, Australia. So, I mean, they were basically talking about Europe at the time. But that's where we're at as far as the idea of creating babies. Now, what do a lot of people say? Well, Florida Maquis is starting a family these days. Haven't you seen inflation? Haven't you seen how expensive things are? Yeah, I see that and I hear that, but then I also see this. Powerball and Mega Millions jackpots soar, reach 750 million and 977 million. What does that tell me? That tells me that there's a lot of Americans that apparently have enough money to go dumping all sorts of cash into the lotteries, plural. And that's just the two big ones. Forget state lotteries and all the different uh, things, the, the local ones, the little $1,000, $5,000, $10,000 ones, that U.S. states and the federal government by um, extension have become addicted to that money. They need that money. They need people buying these tickets because it finances so many operations now in government. But yet people can't afford to start families because of inflation. It's interesting. Ludwig von Mises, the nationalist, which Donald Trump claims to be, affirms socialism and objects only to its internationalism. He wishes to combine socialism with the ideas of imperialism and the struggle against foreign nations. He is a national, not an international socialist, but he also approves of the essential principles of socialism. Now, a lot of people would, would balk at that and say, Lord Maki, Donald Trump is not a socialist. He's not an international one, no. But a national socialist, he absolutely is, because that's the idea of what, how did we get to socialism? Let's go back to our quotes. The values we leave our children are more important than the valuables we leave them. See, values are social. They have no monetary um, assignment. They have no monetary value. 
Some would say capitalism is more important than values. Do whatever keeps people rich. A rising tide lifts all boats. You know, as long as we worship capitalism, everything will work out in the end, regardless of values. But Victor Orban, way over on the right, and Fidel Castro, way over on the left, along with the modern left, the author, Suzanne Fisher, all agree on this idea of values being more important than money. Well, that's what's going on right now in this country. We are having a problem with money, and that's causing people to not have families. And there's, and you can look this up. This is the CDC fertility rates by state. It's a little misleading because it shows the the darker the color that apparently the fertility rates are better as um, so many babies versus how many people live there. But if you take the amount of babies in this particular year, 2021, that were born in North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana, all eight of those states, more babies were born in Florida than in all eight of those states combined. How can that be? It's just because Florida has so many more people. The numbers, the, the colors you're looking here, as a, as a percentage of the population, Florida has so many more people because people are coming here already having had kids in other places. So it's a little misleading. You would think that the populations would be growing in these places. They're not. There are babies being born in these places, and then they're picking up and leaving. And that's this chart here. That's why you see the dark colors being, pardon me, Florida leading the way, South Carolina, Texas, and places that aren't doing so good are doing really good and having babies, just nobody's sticking around. I always want to share this every time I see it and uh, because I get a lot of grief over at the Patreon channel about some of the images being a little bit over-sexualized. It's a little bit too much for some people. Um, Lynn Liaz, by the way, is getting a lot of crap for that too. I just wanted to give her a shout out because she's been getting a whole lot of pushback for some of her content. But uh, go back 60, 70, 80 years in this country and see if you agree with their values. So many said, I'll say it again, Florida Maquis, we need to close the border to maintain American values. The border has nothing to do with American values changing. When this picture was put out, let's see how many kids we got here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 kids. Not unheard of. But I would like to remind a lot of folks while I leave this picture up that if you go back to our grandparents and great-grandparents era, they wouldn't have done a thing about Jeffrey Epstein. Nothing he was doing was would have been wrong to them. Florida Maquis, are you crazy? No. How many of you know who Jerry Lee Lewis is? I'm not going to show the picture here because I don't want to get demonetized. But back in the 1950s, Jerry Lee Lewis, a very popular kind of hillbilly rocker, singer at the time, married his 13-year-old cousin. Married. Well, didn't get caught in bed with. Didn't uh, get caught acting weird with. He married her with the blessing of the state that married him. We had a president 30 years prior to that that had a friend who had a child. The, the friend died. He took the child in, the young, young girl, little girl, baby girl, raised the little baby girl as his own when she got of age, sent her off to finishing school. When she came back from finishing school, when she was 22 or 23, he then proceeded to marry her and have five kids with her and become president of the United States. These are the values of the, and I'm just talking, this all happened in the last hundred years. If you're talking about trying to preserve American values going back 100, 150, 200 years, that's just laughable. It's, it's hilarious. So the, the idea of future American values having a little bit, oh, darker shade to them isn't so uh, outrageous compared to how far we've come since the 1700s and the 1800s. It's an entirely different thing. And guys, American, I, you know, we did a video over this, over at Patreon on this, and boy, it really set a lot of people off. But here, here's the reality. 
North American European men are done having babies. They're done starting families. And I can't necessarily say that I blame a lot of North American women for it because of this mass obesity crisis that we have. And it affects all sorts of things um, health-wise and the ability to procreate is one of those things. Another American value, pills and surgery versus lifestyle change. So the last thing I'll leave with as a final piece of evidence of all this this you can find over at um, Restricted Republic. Lisa Haven, Justice Knight, had this earlier today. Army seeking retirees to come back to work amid men power crisis. Yes, that's right. Not recently discharged, not reservists, retirees. All the way up to the age of 70. That's how desperate it's gotten. American values, so to speak. Can you imagine a bunch of 60-year-olds out here trying to stop this? Can you imagine that? See, not all armies come in uniform. A lot of people say, yep, a lot of military-aged males, a lot of military-aged males. Well, yeah, our army needs them. We're not having enough babies to grow up to become young men and young women to fill those positions. It's just the reality. By the time Gen X is gone, our era, my era, no mid-50s and 20, 25 years, by the time we're gone, it's going to be without immigration, without immigration from countries where they still remember how and know how to have babies. there, There won't be a country. There won't be a country to save. It'll be just a giant wasteland. Because all governments will have collapsed for lack of revenue, tax revenue. I mean, think about it just from this perspective alone. If everybody right now who was buying lottery tickets decided tomorrow to stop, do you know how many governments in this country would literally be only a matter of weeks from being insolvent? Think about this for just a minute. It would only be a matter of weeks before a huge amount of government organizations at the state, local, and yes, some federal level would be insolvent if people stopped buying lottery tickets. But they're buying them in record numbers, but yet can't afford families. But yet can't afford families. So I will leave it there um, and let you guys kind of soak on this. But I don't think I missed any logic points here. I really don't. Could sure use your help, though. I really could over at Patreon. Just a dollar, guys. That's it. One dollar. Not a week. Not per creation. One dollar a month. If you sign up for an entire year, it's less than that. It's literally pocket change. It comes out to like 90 cents, I think. 90 cents. 90 cents per month like three pennies a day and it would make in the right numbers a huge difference it already is making a huge difference in my life but we have to continue we have to continue to fight we have to continue to be able to speak and say what we have to say and take the gloves off and right now this is the premier platform to find that kind of content so would love to have you over there god bless pray for each other pray for me i'll pray for you lift each other up Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.